The 10 Minute Talent is live. I'm James Hornick, joined by Jeff Smith, and we are on the clock. The 10 Minute Talent Rant is our ongoing series where we break down things that are broken in the talent acquisition and hiring space and maybe even pitch a solution or two if we feel like it. This week's topic fully remote isn't a magic bullet for hiring. Um, yeah. Jeff, why don't you start us off here? Um, what do you, uh, what do we have to say about this? Yeah. Um, we talked about the two sides of the coin, right? I think it's a, it's a situation where we can talk candidate centric and we can also talk client centric, but the main thing for me right now is stickiness. And by stickiness, I mean, it, you have to be able to manage and build and motivate a workforce. So there's a ton of opportunity right now for the candidate market. If you're hiring a bunch of remote folks and you aren't ready to give them an opportunity to do great work, you're, you're, you're basically going to waste a lot of time and money and training a resource that, you know, the best scenario, they stick around for a couple of years and then they bail worst scenario. You've trained them for the next opportunity that is set up to, uh, essentially kind of onboard that that sort of resource. Yeah, I think everyone's just got more opportunities in perpetuity now. People people who are in smaller markets now have more to do. So they have to be, the companies have to make sure they're engaged. I think the other, other side of this too is that companies used to be able to be really picky with remote work. So there's a lot of companies that were early to the remote work game that when there were less people doing this before the pandemic, um, that they would they would have this elongated, eight step process. They would run people through the ringer because they can get the, because they were the only ones who could like recruit nationwide, you know, kind of the world was their oyster. They could get the best of the best. Um, but the thing is it's, it's completely flipped now because now everyone's able to do that. And it's, it's, it's the opposite kind of what you're saying. It's like, there's this mentality, the mentality that there was always going to be better candidates out there. We could make this thing as grueling or as impossible as we wanted to, but that's flipped. Now candidates know there's always a better company out there. Candidates always know there's a better place I can be interviewing at out there. And they're just not putting up with like these crazy interview processes that companies are putting them through. Yeah, and and it's a good point. We're seeing there are a few select companies that we've worked with that have made the appropriate pivot um, that had historically offered remote or, or flexible remote schedules, work from home schedules. But by and large, they're still going through the eight step process and it's requiring you know, a ton of recruiters and a ton of bandwidth, but it's also, you know, costing a lot of money. Like, I think you, you have to focus on recruiting like the right personas for your environment, right? It comes back to like, you got to target the right people. Um, if you're not targeting the right people um, and selling yourselves as an organization, you're going to fall into the pitfall that I, that I prefaced at the very beginning, i.e. somebody's just going to take your job for the money, the flexibility, you know, whatever their list might be, and they're just going to talk to the next 10 recruiters that pop in, that slide into their DMs, right? Yeah. I think the next two to six months are going to be pretty interesting because we got this, this environment where um, everyone everyone was fully remote. Look, so there's a difference between work from home and different team in remote, right? It's two completely different things. They got kind of meshed together during this whole pandemic, but you know, work from home means you're kind of still in that, that close proximity to an office space. You might go in one or two days a week or something like that, whereas fully remote means you're kind of all over the place. And I think that we're, we're also finding out that Companies didn't have plans for what they're going to do next, which is understandable. So people would interview with them and not really, it wouldn't really, wouldn't be able to make a decision kind of either way. It didn't really kind of sway on their decision, I, should, I guess I should say. So they go work for them. But we're going to find out there's some people actually want to be in the office a couple of days a week. Um, and organizations may decide to stay fully remote or the opposite. They might realize, you know, I love this. After trying out this fully remote thing, yes, I took this job fairly recently doing it, but they want me to go back in the office like, I don't want to do that anymore. And, you know, companies probably have in their heads, well, we set the expectation that it's remote for the time being, but we didn't know where we're going in the future. But, you know, like, again, like people have tons of options now. And I think that it's, there's going to be kind of a rude awakening, I think, kind of on both ends where there's going to be a lack of alignment between um, relatively recent hires and even, even longer term hires and what companies ultimately decide to do. Yeah, we're experiencing it. We, we were saying the other day, we looked at our, our you know, our full Zoom and I, I was like, oh my gosh, like 12 of these people, 12 doesn't seem like a lot, but that's a substantial percentage of our 
of our workforce that has never seen our office. So yeah. I, people, to your point, they're going to be taking jobs where when they were in the, in the interview process, the messaging was, I don't really know what's going to happen. We don't know what our policy is going to be. And we're just going to kind of roll with it. And they're going to say things maybe unconsciously that help push that person into the door. But like, if you're not aligned with what the candidate expectation is or asking them like what, what was going on in their mind when you had that conversation, like you're not going to know what their preferences are. And if you're not getting out ahead of it, you know, right now, and I would suggest doing that right now, you're going to have absolutely no pulse as to like what's going to actually happen when, you know, more people are fully vaccinated and when more people are more comfortable to come back into an office setting. Yeah. And I think that's that's a good starting point, too, because I think you have to start with your current employees, um, you know, even knowing kind of what they're thinking. Like, have you done has your organization done? Have you surveyed people to find out what their preferences are? You know, they how many people want to be on site? How many people want to be remote? How many people want to be a mix? Are you able to can you please everyone? You know what I mean? That's the other thing, too, is you probably can't. Um, no matter what you do, like you might be looking at some level of of churn. You know what I mean? Or some level of people who aren't happy with kind of what the ultimate decisions are. And, you know, we're seeing companies only now starting to set expectations that are all over the map. Some organizations want to go fully back and just announce it. Some organizations are staying remote. And I mean, tr it, it comes to us. Like we're always ones that find out people don't like what their company ultimately decided to do. Yeah. So, and this, this, I guess we can even jump into fixes. So like, I would say kind of first thing, like right off the top, like, if you haven't done a survey analysis of your current employees, like now's the time to do it. Um, like you're probably late at this point, but like, you know, at least it's better late than never. Like, I think if you, like I said, you can't, you can't please everyone, but at least you can understand if there could potentially be some churn and get ahead of it, whether it's, there's, there's, if there is anything you can do, you know, and if you're, if you're down the path of one direction in terms of like how much remote versus work from home you're going towards and you realize that that's actually out of whack with some of our employees, what they're thinking, Maybe there's something you can do with them, or maybe you need to start kind of making plans for potential replacement hiring now versus when it kind of, you know, figuring that out the last minute. So yeah, this is this is a this is where HR leadership can flex their muscle a little bit. This you know, it, if you get the sense that it, there's a there's a perception in senior leadership that there needs to be a, a visceral swing either way, you've got to get out in front of it and get get the survey of the people. You, you've got to know what everyone's thinking and ensure that the policy that you come up with is as flexible as the whole idea of, you know, remote work in general. Uh, Cause that's the only way that you're going to appease the largest portion of your employee population. So I think that's, it, it's a point that we touched on a lot, of, but you know, it, it bears mentioning that the, your current employees are, are the linchpin to all of this. You need to figure out who you really are. Um, Remote is, it's not the selling point it once was. It, it, everyone's remote now. Everyone's doing work from home. So what do you stand for? Who do you want to hire? Like you can't take leaps of faith on people who are clearly not aligned just because they solve an immediate business need, right? The other thing too is make sure training and, and management training and leadership types of like those sorts of learning development opportunities are totally available. Like now is the time to beef that stuff up so that you can hire from an entry level perspective as, a, as opposed to finding the one trick pony over and over and over again. Yeah. And I think the last thing too is just like companies that have been fully remote and the party's over, like your days of being able to say F it, um, anybody who didn't, didn't meet our impossibly high standard um, we're not going to bring them on board because we have all the candidates in the world because we have access to the full market. And no one else does because no one else is doing this. And that's the thing in the past. You know, you're, you're immortal now. Your hiring plan, it's over. So it's, I think it's just kind of coming to terms with the fact that the entire paradigm has shifted and the remote market itself is, is far more um, saturated with with companies doing it than there were before this. So yeah, I mean, window shopping might come back, but it's not coming back anytime soon. Like it, this is another year or so before you know, we have any sort of semblance of a more than one week recruiting process. All right. And uh, once again, we are short on clock. So that's a wrap for the week. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning into the 10 Minute Talent Rant, which will always be available for replay on the Hirewell YouTube channel, as well as the Talent Insights podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Jeff, thanks again. Everyone out there, we'll see you soon. <laughs>